girls, it's Miss Carrie. We're back again for another story time. I'm so excited that you came back for another one. And if it's your first time here, well, welcome. And I hope you enjoy the stories and songs that we have today. We've got some good ones. One of them, you kind of have to think to understand, maybe to see the ending coming before the, uh, before the king does. But I think that you can because you guys are pretty smart. We've got some good songs, some music to share, to get moving our bodies. I am so excited to get started. And you know what? Even sort of near the end of a long week with tons of things going on, tons of things going on at the library, or maybe things that you're doing at home as part of your summer of activities, no matter how tired I am, when I get to Thursday and story time with you, I just fill back up with energy. It gives me just a bit of excitement so that I feel <sighs> refreshed. I hope that it gives you the same kind of excitement and refreshing feeling too. So let's go ahead and get started because we've got so much to do. <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> Here we are together again. Let's clap and make some noise. It's time to share some stories and friends with all the girls and boys. So come and gather all around and then we will begin to open up our listening ears. It's story time again. <laughs> the first story that we're going to hear today is a story about a Raja and some rice. Now, a Raja is kind of like a king in country on the uh, other side of the world, like India. The Raja is the ruler. And this particular Raja ruled in style. He had a lovely palace with lots of beautiful and wonderful treasures in it. And he didn't really see a whole lot of need to leave the palace and go see what was going on in the rest of his kingdom. And so he didn't know that the rest of the people that he was in charge of were not doing so well. See, the rain wasn't falling as much as it usually did. And so the rice that they grew that was most of the food that they ate, it wasn't growing so well. But the Raja didn't know that. And the reason he didn't know that is because every year the people came to pay their taxes, money they used to help keep the kingdom going, they paid their taxes with rice. And so the Raja would just sit in his palace while people brought lots and lots of rice. It filled up the palace's storehouse, but then there wasn't very much rice left for anybody else. And they were hungry. Well, one day, milling around outside of the palace, there came an old man and he had a bundle under his arm. And he went up to the palace gates and said, I have a gift for the Raja. Well, the Raja loved gifts. The guards knew that. So they escorted the old man into the palace. And the old man said, I have a gift for you, your majesty. It's a new game that I've made. It's called chess. Do you know what chess is? It's kind of like a checkers board you ever seen with squares of different colors, only instead of just little flat pieces like checkers, they've got different shapes, some that are tall, some that look like horses, some that look like castles, and they all move around all over the place. But nobody had ever seen chess before. And the Raja thought it was very interesting, but of course he didn't know how to play. And so the old man taught him. And the next day he came back and taught him some more. And every day he made his way to the palace to work with the Raja, teaching him how to play chess. And one day when he got there, the Raja said, I have to thank you, sir, for making this game and teaching it to me. It's such a wonderful game. I've taught my wife how to play and all of our children, and we enjoy it very, very much. I would like to give you a reward for giving us this wonderful thing. What would you like? And the old man thought for a moment and he said, your majesty, I would like some rice. <laughs> well, the Raja just laughed and he said, look around you. I have 
beautiful paintings and gold treasures and birds and other exotic animals from all over. You could have so much more. Please, just name it and I promise you, you will have whatever you ask for. And the old man said, no, your majesty, I would like rice. And he pointed to the chessboard and he said, I would like one grain of rice on this first square. On the second square, I want two grains of rice. On the third square, I want four. And on the next square, I want eight. And just keep making them twice as much, twice as much with each square. Just grains of rice. The Majesty said, I promise to give you whatever you asked for, even though it's a strange request, and you shall have what you asked for. And so he had his stewards bring him some rice, and he started to count them out on the board. One, two, four. But to his surprise, that doubling method started making the piles fill up very quickly. And soon, he reached a point where they wouldn't fit on a single square anymore. So he said, bring, bring a small box. We shall start putting the rice in there instead. And so they did. But soon the small box was full as the squares just kept doubling and doubling. By the end of the second row, and remember, there's many more rows to go. By the end of the second row, the Raja had to count out 32,000 868 grains of rice. And then he had to keep doubling. It was taking a very long time to count all this rice at this point. And he had his stewards coming in and helping him. And all the rest of that day and the next day, they counted out grains of rice and grains of rice. The sacks of rice were piling up in the hallways of the palace. And soon the storerooms were empty. But he hadn't finished filling the board yet. So the Raja sighed and said, go out to the farms and have them bring in more rice. And the old man said, but your majesty, the farmers have no more rice. There's not even rice to fill the stomachs of the hungry children in the kingdom. Well, the Raja felt terrible. He said, I didn't know. I didn't know things were so awful. I wish I could feed them, but I've given you all of my rice. I have nothing left to give to the hungry children or to anyone else. And the old man smiled and said, Your Majesty, I didn't want the rice for myself. For my actual reward, all I would like is for you to give rice to anyone who comes to your gate. Help keep them fed, and then we shall all be happy. And that's exactly what he did. The end. Now it's time to do an action rhyme. I have Mr. Stripes here to help me with this one because it's hard to get me on camera doing some of these actions. So Mr. Stripes is going to do them for us. Are you ready? So we're going to do different kinds of animal moves. I need you to stand up so you can do them. We're going to hop like a bunny and we're gonna run like a dog. Sorry about that. You could run like a cat if you wanted to. It won't rhyme. <laughs> so we're gonna rhyme instead and you can just pretend to do it like a cat. All right, <laughs> here we go. First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna crouch down because can you hop, hop, hop like a bunny? Hop, hop. Hop and run, run, run like a dog. <laughs> Can you walk, walk, walk like an elephant? Can you swing your trunk? <laughs> and jump, jump, jump like a frog? Can you swim, swim, swim like a goldfish? And fly, fly, fly like a bird. Flap your wings.
can you curl up tight into a ball and not say a single word? Let's try that one more time, shall we? Get ready to hop. Can you hop, hop, hop like a bunny? And run, run, run like a dog? Run in place. Can you walk, walk, walk like an elephant? Big and heavy. And jump, jump, jump like a frog? Can you swim, swim, swim like a goldfish? And fly, fly, fly like a bird? <laughs> Can you curl up tight into a ball and not say a single word? Our second story today is a folk tale that comes from a country called Latvia. And it's about three brothers and a barn. The brothers' names were Valdis and Vilis and Theodoros. And I hope I'm pronouncing those right. I don't know anybody from Latvia, so I can't ask. Anyway, the barn on their farm had a leaky roof. And so they looked at it and their father looked at it and he said, we're going to have to build a new barn. Now, Valdis and Vilis were big, strong young men, more than boys. And so they were really prepared to tear down the old barn and build up a new one. Theodorus was still little. He was just as eager to help as his brothers, but he wasn't quite big enough to do the job the way they could. But he didn't really understand that, or he didn't want to understand that. So he went out into the woods with them to cut wood to build the new barn. And he said, I want to chop down a tree too. Well, Valdis smiled because he wasn't mean, but he knew that Theodorus was not old enough. So he put his ax on the ground and said, there's a nice tall pine tree over there, good and straight. Why don't you go chop it down? Theodorus went to pick up the ax and he lifted and lifted, but it was, it was too heavy for him to even lift off of the ground. Valdis patted his head and said, that's all right. You can help in other ways. And so Valdis and Villas cut down many trees that they could take back to the farm to use for wood. Theodorus picked up some of the branches and sticks that were falling on the ground behind them because he thought they could use them for other things. They went back to the farm and they had to tear down the old barn. They used saws and hammers to pull out nails and cut the boards. And Theodorus wanted to help, but the boards were too heavy for him to even lift and he couldn't use the tools very well. But he helped where he could and when they started building up the new barn in place, he made sure that he was always standing there ready with nails whenever Valdis needed to hammer in a new nail. And he carried ladders and helped hold things in place whenever Villas was working on a part of the barn. He even got to use some of those small sticks and branches he picked up from the ground to help fill in gaps between some of the pieces of wood. And when it got time to put on the new roof, the brothers informed Theodorus that he was too small to climb up on top of the barn with them. It wasn't safe at all. And so, while he waited on the ground, he built a little birdhouse, a nesting box, that they could put up under the eaves of the barn to give a safe place for the birds to roost. When they had finally finished, it was a wonderful barn, and they were all proud of what they had done. And the farmer came and smiled. He'd been watching them the whole time, being proud of all three of his boys. And he said, you've done a great job, lads. I have one more task for you. Whichever one of you can fill up the barn in one day, will get to sit in my rocking chair. And they laughed and said, father, we're ready for a rest. So the next day, 
Valdis went first and he looked around the farm and he saw the large milking cows. They were the biggest animals on the farm and they had plenty of them. And he thought those should fill up the barn right away. And so he started trying to herd them to the barn. Now, the milking cows had been having a perfectly wonderful time in the meadows eating sweet grass. They didn't want to be in the barn. So he had to keep herding them and chasing the ones that ran away and trying to get them to go through the doors while ones that were inside started to make their way back out. And it was a long and hard job. But finally, by the evening, he had all of the cows in the barn. And he said, look, father, I filled the barn. Then the father looked in and said, you have filled the barn from walls to walls, but you didn't fill it all the way up to the roof. It's not full. Then Valdis sighed. Now it was Villas's turn. And he looked around and he said, we have a lot of wheat. We have a lot of wheat that needs to be harvested and it will probably fill up the barn. And so he worked to harvest wheat all day long. He didn't stop to take any kind of breaks. He was sweating and tired, but he just kept chopping the wheat, tying it into bundles and carrying it into the barn. He made stacks that were high, high up, as high as the ceiling. And at the end of the day, his father came and looked into the barn and said, you have filled the barn up to the roof, but you didn't fill it from wall to wall. And Villa sighed. And he looked at his youngest son and said, Theodorus, can you fill the barn? And Theodorus just smiled and said, I can, father. His older brothers didn't know what he was going to do, but they sat back and watched. Theodorus ran into the house and he brought out every candle that they owned, every single one, and a box of matches. And he walked around the inside of the barn, putting candles down and lighting them till the whole barn was brightly lit, full of light. And he said, I've done it, father. I have filled the barn. And his father said, you are right. You have filled the barn with light. Good job. He said, you can sit and rest on my rocking chair. But Theodore shook his head. He said, no, father, I don't have any time to sit. I have to keep working so that I can be big and strong as my brothers someday. And then they filled the barn again with laughter. Our song today is called, I've Got a Body. Do you have a body? Or are you just a floating head in the air? <laughs> I think you've probably got a body. So I think you can help me sing this song. And remember, as we say, the body parts in the song and we talk about what they do, I bet you can do them. So if I say, my nose sniffs, can you go <laughs> just like that? Let's do it. <laughs> I've got a body, a very busy body and it goes everywhere with me. And on that body, I've got a nose and it goes everywhere with me. And I sniff, sniff here, I sniff, sniff there, I sniff, 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 sniff everywhere. I've got a body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. I've got a body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. And on that body, I've got some shoulders and they go everywhere with me. And I shrug, shrug here, I shrug, shrug there, I shrug, 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 shrug everywhere. I sniff, sniff here, I sniff, sniff there, I sniff, 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 sniff everywhere. I've got a body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. I've got a body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. And on that body, I've got some hands, and they go everywhere with me. And I clap, clap here, I clap, clap there, I clap, 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 
clap everywhere. I shrug, shrug here. I shrug, shrug there. I shrug, 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 shrug everywhere. I sniff, sniff here. I sniff, sniff there. I sniff, 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 sniff everywhere. I've got a body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. <laughs> Body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. And on that body, I've got some feet, and they go everywhere with me. And I stomp, stomp here, I stomp, stomp there, I stomp, 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 stomp everywhere. I I clap, clap here, I clap, clap there, I clap, 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 clap everywhere. I shrug, shrug here, I shrug, shrug there, I shrug, 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 shrug everywhere. I sniff, sniff here, I sniff, sniff there, I sniff, 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 sniff everywhere. I've got a body, a very busy body, and it goes everywhere with me. Good job! <laughs> well, I hope that you enjoyed story time today. I hope that you got kind of a little bit of exercise from it there, gotten to move around. And I hope that we get to see you again pretty soon. I bet if you watch the library's YouTube on Saturday, you'll learn to see how to do some crafts and some Japanese calligraphy. There'll be a video about that up there. There's all kinds of things, all kinds of ways that you can connect with me and I can connect with you and the other librarians can connect with you. There's science experiment videos and there's just, there's just tons of things going on at the library. And I can't wait to share even more of them with you. So for now, let's get a big stretch, shall we? Oh, that feels good. Let me see you reach for the ceiling. Oh, you can go higher than that. <laughs> All the way to the ceiling. And touch the floor. Stand up again. Let's do some more. Touch your head. And now your knees. Up to your shoulders. Like this, you see. Reach for the ceiling. <laughs> and touch the floor. And that's all there is. There isn't any more for today. <laughs> but more later. I'll see you then.